Hi there, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And isn't this vase absolutely beautiful? Well, we're not going to talk about it today, but do subscribe to this channel and hit the bell and keep watching because we're going to talk about how to print beautiful vases like this. This is a low poly vase and it was printed in under three hours. Interesting, right? So we're going to talk about the impact of layers and speed and slicer parameters in a future video. Today, we're going to have even more fun because we're going to talk about cookies. Yes, everyone has fond memories, or many people have fond memories, at least here in the USA and probably throughout the world about Sesame Street and watching the cookie monster with your children today with your grandchildren. Wouldn't it be even better if you could make your own 3D printed cookie cutters in any shape you wanted? I'm going to teach you today how to do that with completely free software. You don't have to buy anything. It's completely free. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. First, we have to think about cookie cutters. Most cookie cutters uh, are often made of metal and they're hollow like this. Why are they hollow like this? Well, for one thing, it makes it very easy to push the cookie out after you press it down on the dough. But because they're hollow, hollow like this, you're unable to have any features in the middle. All you can have is an outline. Now, if you take your cookie cutter and you put a back on it, such as this cookie cutter, you can have some features, at least some smaller features. So as an example, there is an eye in this whale because that feature was held in back place by the backing. However, when you press this down on your dough and you go to take the cookie out, you end up having to use a knife or a spatula to pry it out. That doesn't work very well. So the best of all worlds is to produce a cookie cutter that has the outline where there are internal features, it has a backing, but then you cut holes throughout the backing so that you can easily press your cookie out. Now, cookie cutter shapes are generally very simple. Where do you find shapes like this? Well, if you're a great artist, you draw them yourself, you go into some program, you do all that. But I found a secret source of cookie cutter shapes. If you go onto the internet and you Google for free coloring pages for toddlers, you find a whole bunch of free diagrams, free pages that have simple shapes. Then with a little bit of image manipulation using a free paint program, and we're going to show you how to do that, a little bit of work with matter control, a free 3D modeling and slicer program, you can produce any cookie cutter you want and you can make it as simple or complex as you'd like. Okay, let's turn back to the computer now and we'll step through what you need to do to produce cookie cutters that look like any of the cookie cutters we have here in literally minutes. To get started in creating a cookie cutter, once again, we need a simple shape. So we're going to go into Chrome. We're going to open up a new tab and we're going to look for free coloring pages for toddlers. Google will give us some images it's found. We're going to click on one of those that looks interesting and that will take us to a page of interesting images. So let's uh, take and select one of these that we'd like to use. And we have to remember that we're going to want to eliminate the inside because cookie cutters are basically the outsides. So let's find one of these that looks uh, interesting. Uh, how about this fish here? 
I'm going to then right click on it and say save image as and it is very very important that you remember where you save this because you're going to need to open it again and all too often we save things on our computer and then we can't find them so I'm going to click save there was already a fish there so we'll overwrite that fish now we're going to use a image editing program to clean up the middle of this because this stuff won't really print so we're going to go to look for GIMP. GIMP is a completely free image editing program. It's available for Mac, for PC. Now, if I was going to buy a program, I'd probably buy Affinity Photo. I really like it. It also is on Mac, PC, and tablets. I know it's available on the iPad. And, uh, but it's $50. So if you want to start for free, you can just use GIMP. So you have to click on the download button download the appropriate version for your operating system and then we can close our browser and open up GIMP because we are ready to begin cleaning up this program. So once it's open we're going to file open and we have to open up our fish file and we'll begin by erasing things that are outside. Now we could use the same technique to erase the detail inside because the cookie cutter once again won't have that detail. It could have a little bit of detail but not a lot but I'm going to show you a different technique for doing that. Let's go to our magic select tool. It's called the fuzzy select tool in GIMP. Let's select it. Then let's go to select and say sharpen to make it as sharp as possible. Now we're going to go to select and invert. So now we're selecting the inside of the fish, not the outside. Then we'll go to edit clear. Now you'll see this dotted line here. That's the selection, but there's nothing else on the page on the inside anymore. So now we're going to go to edit stroke selection. We're going to turn off anti-aliasing because we want it to be a sharp line. Six pixels is about right. And we're going to say stroke. We'll see that we have a very nice sharp fish. Now if we wanted to put the eyeball back in or any other detail, we could just figure out where that would go and put our eyeball back in. So we now have a fish cookie cutter ready to go. File, export, and we're going to export this as fishoutline.jpg. Quality, we'll put it all the way at the top. Okay, we're all done with GIMP. Now we need to convert this into a three-dimensional object because what we have here is an outline of our fish. So we're going to go to close all and then we're going to quit GIMP. Let's look at our object one more time just to make sure we know what it looks like. Fish outline and there we go. So now we will open up Matter Control. Matter Control is an all-in-one image manipulation, slicer, printer control program. I think it's the ideal program for new people just starting with 3D printing. In this case, I'm going to close the existing windows and we'll start from scratch. Now, when you use matter control, you do have to define a printer, even if you're not going to use it to control your printer. So we're going to define our Prusa i3 and we're going to open up a blank page. Now I'm going to drag this icon right over here, which is the icon for an image conversion, onto my screen. And you can see that's a three-dimensional image. We'll go back to the home position. I'll select it again, and then I'll go to Change. Let me make this a little bigger 
to make it easier to see. And I'll go to change. I'm going to change this image to the fish outline. And now we have what looks like a cookie cutter. Okay, now we're going to make some changes to this. The first is we're going to make it 10 millimeters high. And now we can see how it looks there. I'll go back to the home position. Make it a little bigger to make it easier for you to see. And now because we have this eye here, we need to have a base on this. So we'll select base, we'll select outline, and we're going to take the base height and make it just two millimeters high. So now we have our fish with the base. But if you recall, if we use a cookie cutter like this, instead of a cookie cutter like this, we won't be able to get our cookie out. So how do we fix that? Well, we're going to drag a hole onto the work plane. And then we're gonna put that sort of right in the middle in the area that we want it to be in and push it down a little bit. Now we can go to a top view here and we can actually make it quite a bit bigger because we're gonna take up a lot of the open space here. Now we're going to select everything together and I'm going to go to this icon that says subtract and I'm going to subtract the cylinder, click on update, and it will do a little bit of magical work now. And it takes just a moment, depending on the complexity of your cook cut cookie cutter and the speed of your computer, this could take a, a few seconds. And now we have a cookie cutter with a hole in the middle all ready to be exported out. So I can go to this icon over here and I have a couple choices at this point. I could slice it and print it if my printer is attached to matter control via a USB cable. If it's not, I could go to this icon here and I could say export. I could export it as G code ready to print but in my case, I'm going to actually use the slicer that came with Prusa. So I'll just take and export it as an STL file. Export it as fish outline, or we'll call it fish cookie .stl. And now if I open up slicer, which is Slice 3R, oops, there we go, which is the slicer that comes with Prusa. I could add this to my print bed, go to cookies, and fishcookie.stl. And now we are all ready to print this. Okay, let's go back to the desk and finish up uh, this video with a summary of a very important topic we need to cover and is the safety of using 3D printers for printing things you're going to use with food. Okay, let's continue at the desk. Okay, you caught me making a cookie. Let's see uh, how this works here. We have the cookie in the cutter and now we can push gently in these holes here. The tail is the hardest part to get out here. So we'll press that out a little bit. We'll press in the big hole to get the rest out. We'll gently remove the tail here. Should have made the holes in the tail area just a little bit bigger. But here we go. So we have our cookie here ready to be baked. Well, not really, because these cookies are made of Play-Doh. But let's assume these were real cookies. The question is, is this safe to use with food? Well, that depends on the plastic you use. These were made from PLA. PLA is an organic 
plastic, made most often from corn. It is biodegradable and it is food safe as a plastic. There's no problem with it as a plastic. The problem is that when you 3D print something, there are very tiny, invisible holes almost uh, throughout the print. It's not completely smooth and theoretically those holes could track bacteria. So using this for cookie cutters, completely safe. You're baking the cookies. You're going to kill anything that uh, you could potentially introduce. No problem at all. Using it as a storage product. Let's say you wanted to make your own storage containers for food. Then you probably need to have PLA that uh, is produced specifically for food use and a specific 3D printer. So in the case of cookie cutters, no problem at all. In the case of general utensils, where you're cooking things afterwards, no problem at all. Okay, I hope this uh, was useful and fun for you. Uh, there is no better way to make memories than to bake cookies with a child. Now you can make your own cookie cutters. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't give me a thumbs down, but leave a comment about your observation. Leave a comment on experiences you have making cookie cutters. Please subscribe to the channel. Remember, there are more videos coming every week. And let's continue to learn things together.